Hey there, my name is Craig from Flying Wheels. Welcome to my Flying Wheels YouTube channel. I own a car dealership and right now my inventory is depleted. It is really, really low. I have lots of open spaces, but this video isn't about me. What you'll see behind me is a Volvo sign. That's right, I am at a Volvo dealership. But the weird thing is you'll see right here, a GMC, a Jeep, a BMW, and the list goes on from there. This Volvo dealer is selling anything they can get their hands on just to stay in business. And you might think that doesn't apply to you or won't affect you, but it absolutely does. And this video isn't about the Volvo shortage. This video is about the new car shortage and how it's affecting you personally. So again, my name is Craig from Flying Wheels. Let's get going. Back there is a Volvo dealership, but right here is a Honda. And right here is a Chevy. And then right here is a Jeep a Chevy Traverse, a GMC Canyon, and a Jeep Wrangler. And the list goes all the way down their front line. Now, yes, they do have some new Volvos in stock, but they're only getting a limited amount, which means all of this is prime real estate, open spots where they can't put cars to sell because they don't have enough Volvos. Now, it's been over a year. We've heard about the chip shortage. We've heard about the new car shortage. Yes, we all know about it, but it's actually been continued and it's going to get worse. And this is how it's gonna affect you personally. So I am on the auto mile and there are new car deals up and down the road. So I'm going to take a tour of a bunch of new car stores to see what all of their lots look like and then give you a little information on the way. Now with new cars, it's a trickle down effect. If you're not buying a new car, you're buying a used car. Well, if there's no new cars available, people are buying more used cars. When the demand is up on used cars, because there's no new cars, the supply goes down. And when the supply goes down, the demand goes up. So do the prices. Now, yes, this Volvo dealer does have some brand new Volvos, but they weren't allocated as many as they normally are in a traditional year because not as many are being made. What does allocated mean? How many new cars you are allowed to be given by the manufacturer. So I've said it before, when COVID happened, people stopped driving, the demand for cars went down, car manufacturers stopped producing vehicles or they shortened their orders to the chip manufacturers, the tech companies. Well, the tech companies replaced their orders with tech orders because tech boomed, right? So when tech boomed, the demand for the chips went up. The demand is still there for the chips. And now the demand is there for the auto manufacturers, but it's too late. Those orders have been replaced. So now there is a shortage of chips. Everything is run off electronics now. Everything is run off computers. These cars are sitting in giant parking lots all over the country, finished but they can't run because there's no brains to them. All it is is the body, the drivetrain, the wiring, but there's no smarts to tell these cars what they should be doing. Now I have a perfect example of supply and demand and how prices have skyrocketed and how they are affecting you personally. Now I put an order in on a 2021 Corvette convertible last year. I put it in on 2020. Now here we are in 2021 and the 2022s traditionally should be out already. In the fall of that year should be the next year's vehicles and that's not happening. There's actually a surplus of 21s that aren't even ready for sale. That's a whole other video. I don't know what they're going to be doing with the 2021s and 2023 when they finally have these microchips. Back to the topic though. Now, when I ordered my 2021 Corvette last year, I'm still sitting around waiting for it. Now that means spring has gone by, summer has gone by, we're into the fall and I still have no Corvette. So while I'm waiting for my new Corvette, I've bought three other Corvettes and I own a car dealership. So it's a little easier for me to do that, but so has everyone else that wants a Corvette. If you can't get a new one, you'll go buy a used one. And if everyone wants a used one, guess what? The supplies out there, the demand is high, Corvette prices have skyrocketed. So when I say this has affected you personally, if you're looking for a Corvette, you have seen the Corvette tax in the past 12 months. So let's go to the Corvette dealer. There's the second largest Corvette dealer in the entire country right up the street. I'm gonna go check in and see what they have for inventory and if they have anything available and how far back they are on the Z06s because after my Corvette, I want a Z06 and I need to put an order in on that and I think I'm not gonna see one for a few years. I am at the second largest Corvette dealer in the entire country. And this is the exact spec Corvette I have on order that I've been waiting for for almost an entire year. Now I have to be honest, when I walked in here, I didn't expect to see a single Corvette and this place is packed with them. So I thought I was in luck and I was gonna be able to buy a Corvette on the spot. On the contrary, all these Corvettes are on hold and pre-sold to people that have already been waiting for them. The only ones they actually have left are leftover 2019s, which means they've been holding these cars for two years now, almost three years, because it's the fall, 
and they're still asking all the money for them. Now, maybe you're not all in the market for a Corvette, so let's talk about how it's going to affect you personally if you're looking for a Honda or a Toyota or a Mazda or a BMW. So I'm gonna go check out all of those dealerships and see what they have. Here is a Toyota dealer and their front line doesn't have a single Toyota on it, meaning the front line are their show cars. We have Kias, we have Fords, we have Nissans, Subarus, Hondas, Cadillacs, and everything in between and not one Toyota. So behind me, you'll see a row of Toyotas. Let me say that again, a row of Toyotas. And then all behind me here are rows upon rows of no Toyotas. All of those are prime real estate. If you know me, you know I'm in the car business, prime real estate. Each one of these spots costs money and if they're not filled with cars, they're not selling cars, which means you're not making money. The only dealer that actually has the cars that they sell is the Hyundai dealer. And it's only because it's a small lot. Kia seems to be doing okay. So now we know that Toyota, Kia, all of those dealerships are selling used cars. Well, I own a business. And as a business owner, I like write-offs. I like deductions and I like tax credits. I also need trucks because I have to tow, I have to plow. I need trucks. And a lot of business owners do need trucks and vans. So I'm gonna go to the GMC dealer because I have an order on a Hummer electric vehicle. Now yes, the vehicles I have on order are pretty rare, so I expect delays. But what if you just want a regular GMC pickup? Let's go check out the GMC dealer. And the reason it's so important, and once again, how it impacts you, is if you or someone you know is a business owner and they can't get a new vehicle, it affects their business. When their business is affected, it's a butterfly effect to the entire economy. I'm at the GMC dealer and I've had an order on the new electric Hummer for months now. And I haven't even gotten a call to let me know where it is, when I should receive it, if I'm a year out, if I'm two years out, maybe I might be seeing this thing in 2025. I have no idea. So we're going to go find out. September's a week away. So the 22 should be out already. And in their showroom is a 2020. So that's how short they are. And just like that, second time I got sent packing because nobody has any information on where my 2022 Hummer electric vehicle is. No one has any clue. And that's because... Hummer and GM haven't given them a clue to even tell us. So I'm on a waiting list with Hummer Corporate. The dealers aren't even allocated a number yet, meaning they don't even know how many Hummers they're getting. As far as I know, they're sold out for 2022 and that's the truck version. Now here's how it impacts all of us, especially as business owners. Now I'm a business owner. I get a tax credit of $7,500 for buying an electric vehicle for my business. Then I also get the deduction of 100% on the vehicle within the first year. So I can go out and buy a Hummer, take a deduction and get a tax credit, which is amazing for me. If I could actually go buy myself a new truck for the company but I can't, which then means I have to go buy a used truck. And if I'm buying a used truck, that takes from the used car market, which means there's less cars available in the used car market because more people that would be buying new cars are actually buying used cars. Again, demand is up, supply is down, prices soar. Now here's a BMW lot and all of these spaces are empty. And you'll see like even their BMWs are selling Mazdas, Hondas, Toyotas, Fords, whatever they can get because all this real estate is wide open for them. I mean, look at it. It looks like they were just delivered some new inventory and only two of them, three of them, four of them are wrapped, meaning they only got a delivery of four brand new BMWs. Okay, so I sell used cars. I am a used car dealer. So what I buy are typically vehicles at auction. They're traded into the new car stores. Now, if you're not buying anything from the new car stores, you're not trading in anything to the new car stores. Then the new car stores have no trade-ins to run through the auction for me to buy, which means I have nothing to sell to you. Another reason how it's affecting you personally because they're keeping their cars. The trade-ins that they do get, they're keeping. And when they get new cars allocated to them and they make a sale, they're actually demanding trade-ins. Like a lot of times they're turning down and declining the sales unless you have something to trade in. Meaning if you go to the dealer and you see the car you want and you find it and you like it and you wanna buy it, they might say no to you because you don't have a trade-in to trade to them. And if you do, you're probably gonna get beat up on the price. Maybe you wanted to sell that car outright yourself and make some more money. But now that you have to trade it in, you get trade-in value for it, so it's affecting you and costing you thousands. Okay, so tomorrow I'm going to a dealer auction, and I'm gonna take you with me real quick to show you what it's like at a dealer auction, because that place is usually packed with cars, and it's not as busy as it used to be with cars, with people. It absolutely is, because the dealers are trying to fill their car lots. So less cars, more dealers buying cars, means higher prices for me. 
which also means higher prices for you. That's another way of how it's affecting you. So before we go to the auction, I want to show you my shop real quick. Logan, that's my son, Logan. Say what you just said. Uh, you ran out of cars? He just asked me, completely relevant to this video, am I running out of cars? You'll see there's some open spaces over there. There's some open spaces over there. And this space over here is usually double and triple booked with cars in front of cars. That's how short I am. Now let's head on over to the auction. Fun day at the auction today. That's a 2020 GT500. And behind that's a 2021 quarterback. What you'll notice are a ton of empty spots. Now, yes, there are hundreds and hundreds of cars behind me, but all of these are open spots. Open spots means less cars. Usually, in a normal time, a normal era, normal whatever, these spots are filled with cars as well. Here's two more empty spots behind me. So more dealers at the auction, less cars at the auction, means higher prices. Higher prices means passed on to consumer, because if I'm paying more, so are you. Now that isn't the only reason it's affecting you. Let me say this, not everybody is looking for a new or used car. If you're looking for a new car, good luck. Now you're forced to buy a used car. When used car prices are higher, we're all paying more. Now that's not the only way it affects you. Maybe you're not in the market for a car. Well, me as a business owner, if I can't buy cars, then I can't sell cars, which means my business makes less money, which means less money pumped into the economy because that's less money I can spend. So when I make more, I can spend more. When I make less, I spend less. Now everybody's affected. So when I can't go on vacation, when I can't spend it on tourism, when I can't spend it on more groceries or extras, things for the family, they're all being affected. Now my kids play soccer. If for some reason I can't sell enough and my business slows down, I can't afford to pay for my kids' soccer. Sounds like a first world problem, right? Well, there's a business owner that owns the soccer club that my kids pay for. Now he's making less money if I can't pay for his soccer. So it's a trickle down effect or it's a butterfly effect. Everybody's affected by the auto industry, even indirectly. Now one other thing I wanna mention, yesterday's video I was talking about the Corvette I was buying and the Hummer I was buying and once again it turns into like a first world problem, right? Yeah, Craig, so sad you can't buy your Hummer. Craig, so sad you had to wait nine months for your Corvette. But my business is buying cars and even the new cars I make videos for. So if I can't buy the new cars to make the videos for, I can't make the videos, which directly reflects my income. Income. And once again, when my income's reflected, it reflects my spending habits, and my spending habits are reflected on other business owners and the economy. Now, on a typical week, I try to buy five to eight cars. Today, I'm at the auction. I'm going to take you with me briefly, and I'll show you at the end of the day what I actually end up buying and what I end up spending versus what I would have spent a year ago, because what I'm paying now a year later for the same car, which is a year older, is significantly more money. Now here's a great example of two cars that are at the auction that are almost brand new. Here's a 2020 with 686 miles. This is a 2020 Ford Mustang GT500. This car is $86,000 new. Here is a 2021 Corvette with 893 miles. This is a $70,000 car new. Now why are these one-year-old new cars at the auction? It doesn't even make sense. Well, I'll tell you why. Because they'll actually sell for more money at the auction here than they would at the new car store. So I can buy this Corvette from the Chevy dealer for about seventy dollars to $75,000. One year later, at the auction, this is easily an eighty-five dollars to $90,000 car because the people that can't wait and want one now are willing to pay the premium. They're willing to pay more for this car today than they are to wait for the car. So I have a 2021 Corvette convertible 2LT. It's an $80,000 car. I can buy it, run it through the auction, and sell it for $105,000 very easily. That's the markup on cars because you can't get them. This GT500, that's an $80,000 car, maybe $75,000 car, 100 grand at the auction, and it's a year old. Now this doesn't affect the normal consumer, someone looking to buy a Ford Focus or a Toyota Tacoma, but we saw the Toyota dealership is empty. So the same idea on the GT500 and the Corvette is the same for the Toyota Tacoma. So if you're looking for a Tacoma, that same markup is gonna happen on the Tacoma as well. So yes, the GT500 is a special edition. Yes, it's not a regular Mustang GT, but it's not really a collector's car. Any GT500 that's been purchased since 2005, 2006 has gone down in value. Spending 100 grand on a GT500 isn't gonna make it worth 100 grand forever. It's just that you can't buy them anywhere which makes it more desirable right now. So for the first time ever, 
these cars are going up in value instead of going down because you can't purchase them. Now what's going to happen in two, three, four, five years when you can get them again, when they're newer, faster, and better technology, those are going to go down in value. This behind me is a 2020 Toyota Tacoma with 33,000 miles. Now you could use the argument that I just said, Craig, you just told me that you can't get new Toyota Tacomas. You can't. So what's happening is the new car dealers are actually coming to the auction for the first time in history to buy used cars. We showed you yesterday how the Toyota dealers selling used cars. Well, if they can get a 2020 Toyota Tacoma and sell it, now they're a Toyota dealer selling Toyotas or certified pre-owned Toyotas. So as a wholesaler, we can go buy that car from the the original owner we might look around for them buy it at a discount take it to the auction and then the Toyota dealer is actually gonna pay a premium for it and like I said this is the first time in history I've ever seen so many new car dealers at the auction buying up cars that are one two three years old which means there's less used cars for the used car stores to sell so what do we have to buy higher mileage or older cars so when you want a certified pre-owned or a newer used car you still have to go to the new car store which means you'll be paying more money now let's talk about how it affects everybody it's a trickle-down effect it's a trickle-down economy the auto industry is gigantic we're talking about people that work in wholesale we're talking about people that work in distribution there are manufacturers so there are people that build the cars they're out of work there are people that take the parts off the shelves they're out of work there are people that build the parts they're out of work now bring it all the way down to the shippers the shippers that drive the trucks on the roads they're out of work now we bring it to the dealers the new car stores have salesmen that don't make any money they have auto repair facilities that don't make as much money because there aren't people coming back in when these people aren't making any money or out of work guess what they're not spending as much money which means less money pumped into the economy you are now being directly affected so the day is over and like I said I walked a ton I worked twice as hard to get half as much that right there is a 2015 Ford Fiesta should be a 17 or 1800 dollar car and I paid well over three grand for it which means I have to resell it for more just to make the same amount of profit. I also bought a Tundra, which I said I would never buy again. I bought an 07 Denali and a 2015 Ford Escape, which I actually got a decent deal on. That I think was the buy of the day. The reason I bought the Tundra, brand new frame on it. So now I have to try to sell these things. And like I said, it's all marginal. So whether I pay too much or pay not enough, I still make the same amount of money in profit. Now the problem is I'm also being less picky because I kind of have to buy what I can get. And when I'm less picky, it means they're not as great of a car sometimes. Sometimes I get burned. And if I get burned, it costs me more money to fix them to make them sellable. So that's less profit on the back end for me. Now here's the other thing. It's not all first world problems. It's not just about me. I keep talking about the trickle down effect and how it affects you. I have employees. I have employees that work on commission when they sell a car. I have employees that work on commission when they sign paperwork and when they finance cars. So when we're not selling as many cars, we're not financing as many cars, they're not making as much money and they have families. So when they make less money, they have less money to spend, they have less money to pump into the economy. It's a direct reflection of what's to come. So beware. I hope this video was informative. I hope it was helpful. If it was, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up to help boost the algorithm. Otherwise, make sure to subscribe down below and I'll see you later in the next video. Have a great day. Adios.